Hey, welcome! This is the last part of the course Legal Basis of Values Education and this is Module 3, Drills. So here in this video, we will apply the lessons that we learned in the previous modules or lessons. Alright, so without further ado, let's get started with our drills and choose the best answer in each item. So you can have a paper and pen and then write your answer and then later you will um, check or oh, count your correct answers okay number one what is the best legal document that safeguards the promotion of values education in the philippines letter a arbeck 2002 b 1987 philippine constitution C. Charter of the United Nations and letter D. Universal Declaration of Human Rights And the answer is... Yeah, you can write your answer now And let's check, the answer is letter... That's right, 1987 Philippine Constitution If you remember, we have the educational policy statement in Article 14, Section 3 It clearly mandates all educational institutions to inculcate patriotism and nationalism, foster love of humanity, respect for human rights, appreciation of the roles of national heroes in the historical development of our country, teach the rights and duties of citizenship, strengthen ethical and spiritual values, develop moral character and creative thinking, broaden scientific and technological knowledge, and promote vocational efficiency in the three levels of education, elementary, secondary, and tertiary. The option A, which is our back 2002, provides for a stronger implementation of competencies and values within and across the learning areas. Option C is the treaty that formed and established the international organization called the United Nations. And the option D represents the first global expression of rights to which all human beings are inherently entitled all right number two which of the following statements best describes the moral recovery program a it was a research project of the government that looked into the strengths and weaknesses of the filipino character b it was a program started by president gloria arroyo inspired by the edsa peaceful revolution C. It was a government program authored by President Fidel Ramos aimed to replace the economic recovery program. And letter D. It was a government program aimed to create a critical mass for the genuine movement for national renewal and change. And your answer teacher is letter... Yeah, write your answer. And the answer is... <laughs> yeah, it's letter D. It was a government program aimed to create a critical mass for the genuine movement for national renewal and change. The MRP was a program implemented during the administration of FVR or, or, or Fidel V. Ramos, intended to encourage all sectors of the government to start moral and personal renewal from within and therefore build a critical mass for national moral recovery and developmental change. The option A, the MRP was research-based but it was a government program. The research initiated by Senator Shahani on the strengths and weaknesses of the Filipinos or Filipino character was the anchor of the MRP which recommended goals for change. The option B, Although the MRP was inspired by the EDSA or EDSA Revolution, the program was officially called as the Moral Recovery Program by President Fidel V. Ramos. And the option C, the MRP was not designed to replace the Economic Recovery Program, but was intended to be done along with the Economic Recovery Program because it was believed that economic recovery could not stand alone without moral recovery. Alright, so the answer is letter D. Number 3. Which is considered the, the ultimate basis for their guiding principles of values development? A. Maslow's hierarchy of needs. B. Moral law or natural law. 
and C. Philippines Educational Aims. Letter D. Dex Values Education Program. So your answer is letter. Tada! Letter B. Moral Law or Natural Law. Yeah, the correct answer is letter B, which is the basis or foundation of human laws supposed to be. Kasi minsan, yung natural law ay nababaypas na natin. May mga legislations kasi na nag-override, trying to override the natural law. And that's where um, problems come in when we over overlook this natural law, <clears throat> which is supposed to be the foundation. The ultimate basis for the guiding principles. And this is also the source of the guiding principles of values development. The option A, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, is one of the best known theories of motivation. Abraham Maslow's theory states that our actions are motivated by certain physiological needs. It is often represented by a pyramid, if you are familiar with it, sa Prophet. I think we discuss din natin ito sa ibang lessons sa Values Ed. So, pyramid of needs with, with the most basic needs at the bottom and more in complex, more complex needs at the top. Okay? So, the option C, option C here, uh, Philippines Educational Aims, it, in the, it's in Article 14, Section 3. Is also um, the basis of values development or values education, but it's not the ultimate basis because in itself, it is also based on the principles of the natural law. And letter D, Dex Values Education Program, which made values education a primary thrust with this goal to provide and promote values education at all levels of the educational system for the development of the human person committed to the building of the just and humane society and an independent and democratic nation. Right, so did you get the correct answer? Yeah, it's letter B. Next number. The ultimate dimensionality, the, ultimate, the multidimensionality of the human person allows him or her to A. Grow from childhood to adulthood responsibly. B. Act different roles in relating with others in the community. B. Or C. Use his or her various talents in attaining his or her self-actualization. And letter D. Develop his or her faculties and potentials and use these in enriching others and improving the community. And your answer is letter... Yeah, right. It's letter... <laughs> It's letter D. The best answer is D. It shows the multidimensional nature of the human person capable of developing his or her faculties, intellectual, like intellectual faculties, spiritual faculty, emotional faculty, and his or her social, political, and civic life. Alright, so it's letter. Did you get the correct answer? Letter D. Number five. Which is not a valid cultural foundation of, for values education in the Philippines? A. Western inclination as a result of advancement, advancement of technology. B. Love, freedom, and sovereignty. C. Spirituality, spirituality of the Filipino as an, orienta, as an oriental. Yeah, from the eastern east, from the east, <laughs> from the east, eastern people, oriental. Letter D. World and future orientedness of the present generation. So your answer is letter. That's great. It's letter A, Western inclination. So this answer, the letter A, our Western inclination, has nothing to do with cultural foundation of values education. So options B, C, and D are all valid foundations for values education in the Philippines. All right, except the letter A. Number six. Personalism is positive in itself. Extreme personalism is not because this leads to A. is in dealing with people B. Tolerance of efficiency C. Assessing matters objectively and letter D. Subjectivity of judgment And the answer is letter What's your answer? It's letter D. Subjectivity of judgment 
So, uso yan ngayon, di ba? Yung kahit mali na ang sinasabi sa social media, for example, may mga postings, sasabihin, this is my opinion, respeto naman. So, di ba? Kaya this is this is one of the weaknesses of our character. Yung extreme personalism. Parang kahit mali na, respeto, yan ang opinion ko, eh. <laughs> di ba? So, the opposite of this is option C, assessing matters and looking at things objectively. So, that's based on facts, data, and reality. Did you get the correct answer? Letter D? That's great. Number seven. All of the following except one are goals of the MRP. Which goal has not been listed? A. Value the habits of discipline and hard work. B. Aspire to, for world competitiveness. C. Sense of common good and justice. And letter D. Sense of integrity and accountability. And the answer is letter... Your answer teacher is... It's letter B. Aspire for world competitiveness. So A, C, and D were mentioned as goals of the MRP except option B. Okay, if you look back at the previous lesson, so you will see that letter B has not been mentioned there, has not been listed. Okay, number eight. Which strategy for change would be most appropriate in preventing Ningas Kugon? So if you don't know Kugon is, it's a kind of grass na marami sa mga probinsya. Siyempre, wala niya sa city. If you're living in a city, so you will not see it unless there is a garden there that's grow, that grows uh, Kugon. So I, I grew up in Bicol and I used to play in kug- Kugunan. So, maraming Kugun. Kaya, this is a wild grass at talagang pag natuyo siya, pag na-dry, pag sinindihan, sobrang lagablab. <laughs> Malakas ang apoy sa simula. And then, later on, wala na. So, ningas Kugun. Tingnan natin. What's the answer? A. Network of Change Initiator. B. Roles of Power Holder and Mass. C. Act of will and self-sacrifice D. Holistic individual and structural change So, alin dito yung could prevent ningas kugon yung magaling lang sa simula kasi maningas lang sa simula maalab lang sa simula malagablab lang sa simula After a few seconds, wala na yung apoy ng kugon So, ganun din sa atin, mga Pinoy May pagkaningas kugon tayo pag nahihirapan na pag may challenges na suko na Give up na, di ba? Ganyan. So, alin ang pwede? So, your answer teacher is letter. Yep. It's letter C. Act of will and self-sacrifice. So, that's the correct answer. We need a strong, determined, and consistent act of will and self-sacrifice. Especially the delayed gratification. Kasi magmamadali yung mga kabataan ngayon. Wala nang delayed gratification. Gusto nakukuha lahat. Madalian. Well, we need self-sacrifice and a strong act of will. The option A can be appropriate in preventing our kanya-kanya syndrome. The option B can be appropriate in preventing extreme family-centeredness and passivity and lack of initiative. And option D, option D, can be appropriate in preventing lack of discipline, lack of self-analysis, and self-reflection. Okay? So did you get the correct answer? <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> Number nine. What is the meaning of dynamism of values? A. Values are universal truths which human beings hold to be good and important. B. Values are biologically transmitted. C. Values are changing and adjusting to the needs and demands of the times. And letter D. Values are learned from experiences. Your answer is... Good job! The answer is C. Dynamism connotes movement or change. So when we say values are dynamic, it is not static. Therefore, it's changing and it's adjusting to the needs and demands of the time. 
Okay, number 10. What is implied by this statement? Values education is expected to be integrated in all learning areas. A. Teachers should teach values every day and in every lesson. B. Only trained teachers should integrate values in their lessons. C. Values integrated should be incidental. And letter D. Every teacher is a values education teacher. What is your answer? So, using the technique of the process of elimination, we eliminate letter B and letter C, and we have A and D. So, between A and D, what's your answer? The answer here is letter... Ta-da! <laughs> it's delayed gratification. <laughs> letter A. Teachers should teach values at every day and in every lesson. So, um... It specifies that values should be taught in every lesson. So that's regardless of the subject. Okay, every lesson. All learning areas. Did you get the answer? Number 11, which of the following is the values education program anchored on? A. Republic Act 7796. B. Governance of Basic Education Act of 2001. C. Education Act of 1988 and letter D. Philippine Constitution of 1987. Mm -hmm. So, wala natural law. So, ano yung sunod? Right. The best answer is letter... And the correct answer is letter D. Philippine Constitution of 1987. Kasi yun yung latest. Siguro kung mayroon ng... Ano? <laughs> um, Philippine Constitution of 19, uh, 2030. O, yun na yun. So, so far, ito yung latest na constitution natin. Existing. Philippine Constitution of 1987. Um, the option uh, the option A, the R Republic Act 7796, the, or, or also known as TESDA Act of 1994. It created TESDA. So, you can take note of that. The option B, the Governance of Basic Education Act of 2001 or the Republic Act 9155, it solidified the school as the heart of the formal education system that provides the students with the skills, knowledge, and values they need to become caring, self-reliant, productive, and patriotic citizens. It also created, uh, changed the name of Department of Education, Culture, and Sports to DepEd, Department of Education. So, next to DepEd. Yan din yan yan. RA9155. Or Governance of Basic Education Act of 2001. The option C, Education Act of 1988 or RA6655 is the policy of the state to provide for a free public secondary education to all, especially to qualified citizens. Alright? Number 12. Which is not a goal of values education in the Philippines? A. Respect for religious diversities must be imbibed by both teachers and learners of values. B. Developing the faith in the supreme being is part of moral education. C. Appreciation of common beliefs among various religions is a primary concern in teaching values. And letter D, religion is not a main issue when handling values education classes where students have different religious orientations. And your answer teacher is, this is a bit confusing or <laughs> baka kasi pwedeng lahat, pwede siyang lahat gold ng education pero may keyword na kailangan mong hanapin kapag ka naghahanap ng tamang sagot. And the answer is letter... Ta-da! It's letter C. Appreciation of common beliefs among various religions in is a primary, primary concern in, in values education. Of course, um, we teach appreciation but not a primary concern per se because the primary goal of values education is the development of human person committed to build, adjust, or committed to building, adjust, and humane society. Alright, so letter C. Number 13, which of the following indicators can be used as a barometer for measuring sustainable human development? Panukat, pangsukat. A. Increased awareness and protection of the environment. 
B. Higher employability of the skilled workforce. C. Lower inflation rate as indicated by a higher G GNP. D. Improve health and general well-being of the community. And the best answer is letter. Yeah, right. It's letter D. Improved health and general well-being. General well-being of the community. The option A can be sustainable environmental development. B and C can be uh, for measuring sustainable economic development. Okay. The answer is D. Did you get it? A good job. Next number. 14. Which of the following factors may impose the least direct effect in the development of honesty? A. Media exposure. B. Parental behavior. C. Social expectations and norms. And letter D. Leadership roles. The answer is... With the least direct effect is letter... That's good job. Media exposure. Of course, may direct effect pa rin yan, pero least nga lang siya. Pero yung B, C, and D, they have the strong direct effect in the development of honesty. 15. When does the Kanya Kanya syndrome become positive? A. When one can discern what he likes in life. B. When the benefit of others is viewed as one's loss. C. When one protects individual interests. And letter D. When one becomes self-reliant and can stand on his own. The answer is... Your answer is letter... That's great. The answer is letter D. When one becomes self-reliant and can stand on his own. So dahil sa pagkakanya-kanya, diba, pwede tayong makapag-isa o hindi umaasa sa iba. Kasi wala tayong maaasahan, diba? Kaya natututo tayong tumindig sa sarili nating mga paa. So in this case, nagiging positive ang effect ng kanya-kanya syndrome. Okay? Letter D. Did you get it? 16. Which can best demonstrate civic consciousness? A. Proud to be Pinoy. B. Paying taxes. C. Technology transfer. And letter D. Waste disposal awareness. And the answer is? Your answer is? That's great. It's letter D. Waste dispos disposal awareness. Um, letter A can demonstrate um, nationalism and patriotism. Letter B is also civic consciousness. Uh, technically, but it's already in the acting level. And letter C, the IT skills. And letter D is a civic, um, still in the awareness level. Is that the correct answer? Did you get it? Cool. That's great. Number 17. Which of the following conditions best guarantees that values, values development program in the barangay is will be successful? A. The barangay leaders believe in the program. B. There is a budget implemented. C. The whole barangay is actively involved. And letter D. There are leaders who will initiate its implementation. And your answer is? Yep. Very nice. 17 is letter C. The whole barangay is actively involved. 18. Which of the following individuals does not exhibit vulnerability to corruption? A. Corporate leader who bribes in public bidding. B. A political leader who resorts to vote buying. Letter C. A waiter who finds and reports a lost item in the restaurant to the authority. And letter D. A public employee who neglects his duty. And yeah, the answer is letter. Alin yung pinakamabait? <laughs> Number 18, yeah, it's letter C. A waiter who finds and reports a lost item in the restaurant to the authority. Ang bait naman ang waiter na to. Bigyan natin to ng malaking tip. Number 19. Which of the following best shows the weakness of familyism? A. Family centeredness. B. Patronage and political dynasties. C. Lo loyalty to the family. And letter D. Concern for family. Yep, and the answer is, your answer teacher is what? 
Good job, it's patronage and political dynasties. Ito ang kita niya, di ba? Baka meron yung saying niya. Sa amin, meron yun. 20. Filipinos are observed to be passive and lacking in initiative, which does not illustrate the traits. A. Palusut Syndrome B. Tolerance for Violation of Human Rights Letter C. Submissiveness to Authority and Letter D. Quick Resignation to One's Fate What's your answer, teacher? Yeah, the answer here is letter Letter A. Palusut Syndrome It doesn't illustrate lacking in initiative actually may initiative nga siya eh kumikilos gumagalaw he is active yun nga lang negative nagpapalusot pa no? so yung tolerance for violation of human rights yeah it shows a uh, lack of action talagang katanggapin nila sabihin natin na kunyari yung EJK sasabihin EJK sasabihin na ah, ganun talaga so wala nalang gagawin tatanggapin nila di ba? we just tolerate it Submissiveness to authority, ganun din. Very passive. Kung anong sabihin ng leader, aantayin na lang natin bago tayo kumilos. And letter D, quick resignation to one's bit. Ah, bahala na. O, ganyan tayo mga Pinoy, di ba? So it illustrates lacking in initiative and passivity. Bahala na si Lord o bahala na si Batman. Di ba? Bahala na attitude. Next number is 21. The educational policy statement in Article 14, Section 3 clearly mandates that all educational institutions implement values education programs in all levels of education. B. All educational institutions teach values education as a separate subject. Letter C. All educational institutions inculcate and teach values. And letter D. All educational institutions teach the four main concepts of values. What is your answer? Educational policy in this Article 14. Please memorize this, okay? The answer is letter. I hope you get it. It's letter. It's letter. Ta-da! It's delayed again. All educational institutions inculcate and teach values. So option A is about RA11476. The institution, in, <laughs> institutionalizing GMRC and values ed. And let option B, uh, new secondary curriculum. Um, it's in the that started in school year 1989 to 1990. So new secondary curriculum. Yan. And option D is the text order number six, 1988. All educational institutions should teach the four main concepts of values. Makadiyos, makatao, makabayan, makakalikas. Alright, number 22. It was in 1988 that values education was made as the educational thrust in all levels of Philippine education through the leadership of A. Dr. Lourdes R. Kizambin B. P President Fidel V. Ramos C. Senator Leticia Arshahani and letter D. President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo And your answer is letter Yeah, that's great. She was the Secretary of the Department of Education, Culture and Sports during the time. So Dr. Lourdes R. Kizambing. 23. All except one are the characteristics that the Values Education Program wants to develop in the Filipinos, which is the exception. A. Self-actualized, integrally developed human beings imbued with a sense of human dignity. B. Social beings with a sense of responsibility for their community and environment. C. An abiding faith in God as a reflection of their spiritual being. And letter D. Tolerant and open disposition of the mind. So, all in exception. Of course, it's letter... Yup, it's letter D. 23 is D. So A, B, C, they are all they are all characteristics that the Values Education Program wants to develop in the Filipinos. Number 24, which is the value that regards others with dignity and respect? A, sensitivity. B, faith and religiosity. C, pakikipagkapwa. And letter D, flexibility and adaptability. 
Right, the answer is, did you get it? Very nice. 24 is letter C. Pakikipagkapwa. What is the English of Pakikipagkapwa? Can you comment that in the comment section? <laughs> Parang, ano nga ba? Parang wala exact translation. Anyway, number 25. No, last number. Which is not a weakness of the Filipino character according to the Moral Recovery Program? A. Extreme Personalism B. Passivity and Lack of Initiative C. Materialism Letter D. Colonial Mentality So, lahat yan ay weaknesses pero alin dyan ang hindi nabanggit sa MRP na, na, na ka, kahinaan ng ating Filipino character and the answer is letter Yeah, that's great. You got it? Good job. Oh, wow. We're done. So, please count your score. What's your score? The passing rate is perfect. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. Anyway, congratulations, wherever your score is. Great job. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And I mean, you learn. I hope you learned a lot from this. And you better do it again so that you may see in which area you need uh, improvement. Okay, so that's all about this uh, lesson, this course on legal basis of values education. So we're done with module one, module two, and module three. So whenever you need to get back to these lessons, so you just visit the YouTube uh, pay, uh, channel and then check out these uh, lessons. Right, and for more information, more materials, lectures, and videos, you can check this website, Teacher Dom's Network. We also have available ebooks here, high quality, super affordable, and you can use it. Yeah, motivational um, ebooks. Yeah, you can check this out, ebook shop. And for Values Ed Majorship, we uh, have this specific page, Values Ed Majorship. We are posting videos and lectures. First, of course, uh, we are prioritizing values and majorship, and then later on we will post prof ed, and then next is gen ed, and then next is uh, English majorship. So those are my specialties. So now we're prioritizing this values and majorship. Now um, you can also message me directly using this page contact contact form you can contact me through this or if you have questions if you you can go to this page teacher doms um, this is a facebook page and you can also message me directly using the messenger and yeah please follow and like this this is a super helpful page also that uh, we post um, daily motivational um, post so that's all for now and uh, Thank you very much and I hope to see you in the next lecture. Keep safe and God bless.